Praise God. Are we wholly available to the Lord? I had a revelation. Um, this couple of days, and I wanna, I wanna share this revelation with you this morning. It's not new. Everybody knows it. You wanna know what it is? Yes? <laughs> okay, short. In the kingdom of God, there is not unemployment benefit. Okay, in the kingdom of God, there's no social security or unemployment benefit. Job or job keeper. <laughs> no centrally, no right. I remember when we came in Australia in, uh, in IT3, uh, <clears throat> we were young and <clears throat> um, <clears throat> at the beginning of when we came, there was no jobs. We all wanted to work. It's just there's no work. We went to every single factory in in um, in Melbourne, in in the Noble Park, Dandenong area, going from from factory to fa factory, from office to office, and all we knew is looking for a job. And everybody said, "I'm sorry, no job." Looking for a job. Uh, but then jobs started to come, and uh, we all got jobs after a couple of years. But then, <clears throat> when summer came. We wanted to, to be free to do other stuff, like, for example, coming to Queensland. We loved coming to Queensland for, for a month or so in, in, in January, you know, and, and so on. And we just left the jobs, a, 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 a bunch of young people, and we hopped on our cars and we came to Queensland and we had a church here. Uh, and we had friends here and, you know, it was just awesome. And you could easily just leave your job. And when you, we went back to, to Victoria, we, we um, just went back to unemployment benefit. And no question asked. You, you, just can, you would just get the money, you know. No question asked. You, you know, you could leave your job anytime you wanted. You could go back and get your money and all that. It was so easy. These days, it's not so easy anymore. Uh, what, what I wanted to... Um, say that, in, you know, just looking through the Gospels, and you all know that, Jesus uh, is looking for laborers. He's investing in his people. He's investing in his servants. He, he's, uh, he's um, for example, he's giving us the Gospel. He has invested the Gospel. He's committed this message of the Gospel to us. Why am I preaching before I say this? Why am I preaching this? Because we've heard this uh, uh, preaching from Brother, Brother Emeka and we tend to uh, just get a message and then move on. And, and uh, I, I think this message has stayed with me uh, and, <clears throat> and I meditated uh, on, on this message because I speak with many brothers in the church all through the week. Maybe, you know, we talk on the phone or we meet. And when we come to this, uh, I, I see that uh, many brothers, especially the younger brothers, many many brothers, they just want to be there. They want to, they want to be bold for Jesus. They want to, they see themselves that one day, they see themselves as as witnesses, bold witnesses, where they can, they can you know share the gospel with people. But somehow it's not happening now. Somehow I I I, I think they. They, they need a change, they need a transformation, they need something to, to, to enable them to, to, um, to be obedient to the call and, and share the gospel um, with, with uh, people uh, in the neighborhood, at work, uh, people w w which they, they meet, you know, maybe even out there in the street. That, who doesn't want that? Come on. Can I see? You all want that, yeah? Not only the young? I think everybody, even Brother Ben is shipping sheepishly, I shall, it's just so keeping. I thought he's going to be a, <laughs> with his hands up. But yeah, I, we, we want that. I, I know when, when I'm doing that, or when I'm out there, and, and I, I can sense what Jesus um, meant when he says, this, my food is, 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 to, um, is to do the will of God. And 
in the context, we see that the will of God for him uh, there was to reveal himself, to, to preach the kingdom to, to the Samaritans. So <clears throat> God has invested in us. He has committed the gospel to us. He is giving um, uh, the Holy Spirit to us. He's flooding our hearts with, with the love of God. He's giving us his promises. He makes his nature, God, divine nature available to us. He's giving us so much and he expects a return from us. He expects an increase as it is. He expects that his, you know, his, um, his people will, will labor alongside him that, my, that his kingdom may increase. This message that I, I shared, it was born in my heart uh, Wednesday night at the prayer meeting. I didn't come to the prayer meeting especially to pray. It was on something on the spot. And I think God spoke to me when I shared this little bit of a message there. And uh, I went home and I, I kept meditating on it. Actually, this morning I wanted to speak about the image of the beast this last time. So maybe I'll speak about that next Sunday. But this, this, uh, this morning I just wanted to us to see uh, that all of us are called to labor alongside Jesus. There is no place in the kingdom of God. You can see that in his parables, in his teachings, that there is no unemployment benefit. He, in the kingdom of God, we are not uh, just allowed to stay idle. There is a job for us. So I want to start by reading, um, uh, reading a, a scripture here that we all know. I like to preach from this. I preached a few times. And the uh, scripture is from 2 Corinthians. And I, if you have your Bibles, please, please open your Bible. Um, and uh, <clears throat> read, underline this, meditate on this. I myself cannot, all I can do is be an example, all I can do is teach, all I can do is exhort, but it is actually we, all of us, have to decide to obey Jesus. All of us have to decide to, uh, to follow through as it is, or to deny ourselves. That, that, you know, if we want to be witnesses for Jesus in these days, we need to know how to deny ourselves. We need to, to know how to crucify our flesh. Our flesh, you all know, our flesh is, is ashamed of Jesus. Our flesh is weak when it comes to that. We cannot do this in the flesh. We need to do this by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to come out from, from sitting at the feet of Jesus, from being worshippers. We need to come out from there and there go with the aroma of Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit, with His love in our hearts, and, and uh, be a witness and, uh, and, and, you know, share the gospel. So listen to this word, for the love. Listen how Paul, Paul has put a few things together here. For, uh, it says, for the love of Christ controls us. Now that's what, con what, if we are to labor for Jesus al or alongside Him, it is the love of God, first of all. You, you know, he, he loved us. We love him. And this love that he shed abroad in our hearts, that this love that we, we got to know or we experience, he says, that controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he says, and he died for all that die who live, might not live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on, on their behalf. This is so important because um, in the flesh we, we all want to live for ourselves. Our jobs are for us, our families are for us, uh, our free time is all for us, it's all about us. It's, we are self-centered people. But Jesus, he says, Jesus, Paul says, the Holy Spirit says, Jesus died that we might not live, that we might not be self-centered as it is. And this is one of the, the greatest problems in the church. You know, the church are filled with self-centered people who came to Christ and even Christ was added to their lives as it is to to even help them in their agenda, in what they wanted to, to achieve in life. It's not a, about them serving the Lord. In, it's, it's not about being christ uh, or living for Christ, putting all, thing, all things at his feet. No, it's, uh, so Paul says that, that he died for, for all so that they who live might not longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. This is the gospel. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, 
Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this, in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation or a new, new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself uh, through Christ and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It doesn't say he gave me this ministry of reconciliation. He gave us all the ministry of reconciliation. Namely that God was in Christ to reconciling the, wor the world to himself, not counting the tr trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the, the word of reconciliation. Therefore, he says, we are ambassadors. We, not, not just me, not just the disciples, we are all stand for Christ. We are all represent him. We, we are ambassadors for him. And, and, uh, and he says, uh, there is an appeal to us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled with God. Amen. You and I are ambassadors. We are called to be ambassadors to stand for Christ, to stand for, for his kingdom, to be in this ministry of reconciliation outside the church and inside the church. And as I said before, I don't want to spend too much time here, but as I said before, uh, God has committed to us this ministry of reconciliation. God has committed to us the gospel. Now, just imagine, we have something that, that the, the world needs. We have something that that can change people. We have something that can save people. We, can, we have something that God has committed to us so we can spread around and we, uh, and we don't know. We don't feel that we should do it. So some of us, we, we're not sure whether we should do it. We, we, or we, we, we refuse to do it. Because we self-centered. Because we want to live for ourselves. Doesn't make sense. You know, God has committed to us the gospel. The Bible, the Bible says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God unto salvation. God has committed to us the Holy Spirit. Again, the power of God. We have what it takes and we keep it to ourselves. We, we don't want to, we don't want to because we, we find all the excuses in the world why we, 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 we don't share the gospel. Or why we shouldn't. You know, we, we have this mentality in the church and we've inherited through, you know, from the church institutions that, that we know that this job is for, for, for evangelists. This job is for, for pastors. It, it, it's not for, for us. Now, we, are, we are called, Bible calls us that we are a holy priesthood unto the Lord. Peter says that, Paul says that, Jesus, we are, we are a holy priesthood. We are in this ministry. What's a priest for? You've heard me say many times. A priest is in this ministry of reconciliation. In the old covenant, there was, there was uh, uh, one tribe. Uh, the Levites were there. And, you know, and they, they were doing this, this ministry for the rest of Israel to, to reconcile in case they sinned and they needed to be forgiven, to be restored, their, their relationships to be restored to, to with God. And they did all the jobs. But in the New Covenant, there's no special people as it is. There's no special tribe. You know, it's, we are all called into this. And, and as I said, go and have a look. And, 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 and through, the, through the gospel, you, you see that God is committing. He's invested in us. He gave us what we need. We have no excuse. We no lack. And, and he's sending us out. And... And as I said, many of us, um, you know, we want to do this, but somehow we uh, feel helpless. Uh, somehow we postpone it. We say that some people say, as, as you, heard, you heard Brother Mecca, there's still more time till harvest. It's, it's, the harvest is not ready yet. It's, it's not the right time. We find all sorts of excuses. So, but we want, inside we know that this is the will of God for us. Inside we know that this will bring us much joy. Much, much nourishment, much strength. Jesus says, this is, the, uh, this is the will of God. You know, doing the will of God is my food. You know, you, I, I, I can see that. I, I know that. You know, after you, you, you've, you've done the will of God, after you share the gospel with somebody, you know, you, just, you, you become strong in the inner man. You, you praise God. You know, you, you, you feel nourished. Is that, is that so, Brother Ben? 
Brother Tyler, is that so? We all know that. And how, but how can we, how can we change? How can we be transformed in this area? See, we are very selective many times when it comes to Jesus. We, we, we know this verse, uh, I want to read it for you, 2 Corinthians, we, 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 we read this uh, many times. Uh, chapter 3, we all want to, uh, we want to be transformed, we want to be changed uh, to be more like Jesus. It says here, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, this is chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with an unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as from the Lord the Spirit. Can you see the, 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 the word tra being transformed, being changed? And, and, and this is what I feel that in, in our, in our many brothers want to change in this area. Many, many and, and they don't know how. Um, and, and to be changed into the image of, 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 of the Lord. I want to speak uh, next week about the, the image of the beast, but there's another image here, the image of the Lord that we need to be transformed. So how, how, do, we, how do we get, to get transformed, to change, to, to, to come to a place where we can see that we, we change, that we, we know that we know that, that I am a minister of this reconciliation, to know that I know that I am a sent out one, to, to know that, that I have this ministry, this is my own ministry, a, a calling from the Lord. You see that <laughs> we, we see in, uh, in Jesus' parable that he invested in, in some one talent and another one two and another five. And I, and I believe that th th this is the one talent that all of us have, and uh, this ability to, to share Christ with others. You, you, you agree with me? Why do I say that? Because all of us can speak. All we need is to be able to speak. You know, God created a, a man according to his image. And it's only man who has this ability, like God, to speak words. No other animal has this ability to speak words. Give us, enable, God can enable us to, to, to speak words. And we need to use these words. And, that's, and, and all of us can speak unless we... we, we Mute, we don't have this ability, but if we have this ability, we have this talent to be able to share Jesus with others. Amen. And, and how, as I said, I, I want to talk about this desire. How do, do we come to, to this reality in our lives where, where we can speak the gospel to others, where we can share the gospel with others? The gospel who is the power of God for salvation. Um, and what I meditated, what I shared um, um, on uh, Wednesday night is if we want to be changed and if we want to be transformed, if we want to come to be more like Jesus in this area, we need to look at him. This is the secret. See, in our meets, we spoke a lot about uh, looking at Jesus or seeing the glory of God on the face of Christ. This is the secret of transformation. And then by beholding the glory of God on the face of Christ, we are being changed from glory to glory. But sometimes we want to be very selective of what glory would we like in Christ. For example, I, I want to say some people, and you know what I'm talking about, some people, they like the holiness of Jesus, the purity of Jesus. They, they want to behold that and they want to become holy. And that is good. We need to do that. But we cannot be selective in this area. You know, we are, we are people of extremes. We, we, our flesh is like that. Please know your flesh. I want to preach one day about identifying the flesh in the church. We have this flesh who needs to be crucified. And in the flesh, we are people of extremes. We want to go either in one extreme or the other. When we want to focus on one thing, some other people want to focus on another thing. For example, in, in our midst here, there are brothers like me f f that came from CFC churches. You know, we listened to a lot of messages from the, uh, Brother Zach Poonen. Good messages, awesome messages, all the time about looking at Jesus and being holy. And we always, you know, uh, majored on judging ourselves and... Uh, and examine ourselves. This was a major focus on in, in, in our church. 
and, and we can be selective. He says, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm called to do. And I'm just be, I want to be holy like Jesus. Uh, but we want to be like Jesus, not just holy like Jesus. Jesus is holy. And by the grace of God, we want to preach this message and continue to preach, preach this message, message of becoming holy like Jesus or examine yourself or test yourself to see whether you're in the faith. And it's good. Some other brothers that are in our midst, for example, have majored in their past in contending for the faith. I don't need to name anybody, <laughs> but they are. They, they, this is their, their, their default mode. You know, whenever, you know, they, they just, they're just there because they spent many years under a certain preaching or teaching and they, they, they people of, we are people of extreme. Some other brothers, they, they want to major on music and worship. Praise God, all these things are, are, are in the Word of God. So we cannot just neglect some glory of Christ, of God in the face of Christ, and I say, I, this is what I like. Some brothers are always, you know, finding faults with others. And we need to find faults and, and, and make sure that there's no heresy in, in, in our midst and, and so on. But we need to look at Jesus, how he is in, as a whole, and what I see, I see that Jesus um, is a lot more than that. And I want to look at a scripture this morning, as if, if, um, if time allows, from Matthew chapter 9. If you open your Bible, please. And we just want to look at Jesus. I know it's a simple message. Maybe you've heard it before. But this is, this is something maybe that we need to, we, we need, we need to recover in the church. I remember back in Romania when we lived under communism, even as young people through the primary and high school, because I left Romania after I finished high school. But there was never, there was never um, so much teaching and exhortation to the church, oh, you've got to share your, 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 your faith, you've got to evangelize, you've got to do this. We did it. I don't know why, but we did it. Even in... I mean, it was so sh shameful at the time. We were ashamed, we were mocked, we were despised. We are the base people in the society but by the communists. But we did it. We were so bold. I remember even it was forbidden, but we would go on train from, from city to another church, a group of young people. You know, we, we had the, the instruments, the accordion, the guitars, and you know, there was about 10 or 15 of us, and we would start singing, and the whole, there was an open um, wagon type of a, a, a train, and there was people even from other wagons, they, they were coming and just to, to listen to these songs, and we are so bored, not ashamed of Jesus. And then there was no, nobody, because this is what the Holy Spirit, I believe, does. It's, 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 it's natural for somebody who's got the gospel to share the gospel. It's natural for somebody who has Jesus to share Jesus and to lift up his name in any situation. Awesome. <clears throat> so, Matthew chapter 9. Chapter 9, I want to read from verse 35. Jesus was going through all the cities. Just a few points from here. Uh, Jesus was going through all the, the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Uh, seeing the people, he said, um, uh, he, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, to us, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. This was the, 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 the exhortation that I had Wednesday night at the prayer meeting. So we can praise and beseech the Lord of the harvest so he can send uh, uh, laborers, so he can send workers into his harvest. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to, just from this scripture here, I just want to look at Jesus. And because we all want to be like him, this is the purpose of discipleship. You, are, you and I are not called to be churchgoers, uh, to, to, to even, even be part of a, a, a church or an institution. We are not called to, to just bear the name of Christ 
um, we are called to be disciples. And this, uh, this disciple is someone who decided that this teacher is the best of all teachers. And I would be so blessed if somehow I would come to a point where I can be his disciples. This is what happened in, in you know, 2,000 years ago in, in Rome and in, 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 in Greece. People had a certain philosopher or uh, um, a painter or a sculptor, some artist, and if they wanted to become a painter or a sculptor or a philosopher, uh, they chose a certain master. They, they, they chose a disciple maker as it is. And then they went and they sat at their feet and they lived with that disciple um, maker as it is, with that master, day and night. And the hope and the purpose of them uh, living with and following the master was that they might learn and one day they might become like him. That was the whole purpose. Because they loved the master. And Jesus took, came and he, he came as a disciple, he, as a master. He came to make disciples. And, and our calling is, is to, to be like Jesus, to follow him. And, and as I said at the beginning, not just be selective and I, I want that, I don't want that. No, it's the whole of Jesus or none of Jesus. And when I see here, I see Jesus going through the cities and he was, he was the greatest evangelist. He is the model. He is, if we want to learn something, how to evangelize, we look at Jesus. In what Isaiah 61 says, the Spirit of God has been poured upon me that I may come and what? Share the good news with the, with the poor. He, that's why the Spirit of God came on him that he might share the gospel with the poor. Yeah, he's the greatest evangelist. And he, he says he was going through the synagogues and, and he preached the gospel in, 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 in the religious setting and he preached the gospel through the villages to people outside, maybe who didn't know, to, to sinners. He preached to everybody in any place. The, his ministry was to, to share the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, this is the greatest news. I mean, look at this. I, I meditated and I'm reading about this. And it is, it is so hard for us to even to preach the gospel of the kingdom. We've acquired a, a way of sharing the gospel and we can't let go of it. it it's, it's either Jesus loves you we know, you know, we got nothing to, to add to it. Jesus loves you. This is the gospel. This is not a gospel, or at least not the whole gospel. Or maybe preaching the law like right, right comfort, and we, we think that we're going to, um, you know, convince people that they are sinners and they're going to repent. It's not. What Jesus said here, he said, uh, the word of God says here that he preached the, word, the, the, the kingdom of God. The news, the good news is that the kingdom has come. The good news is that the king has come. Vanessa says, wherever the king is, that's where the kingdom is. I like that. I, she posted something on Facebook. Really nice. You know, the, the great, the best news, Jesus started his ministry like an evangelist and says, repent because the kingdom of God is nice, close, it's here. Why did he say that? Because he was the king and he was there. And he says, now because, of, because the king has come, now you have to repent. This is, this is the greatest news. We talk about the, our Christmas story a lot, but we don't make enough just of the fact that, that God has come and become man. He's, he's he to, taking himself uh, on himself human flesh, and he came to us. The king has come among us, the king of the universe. That's what you're chosen, you, you see him chosen. The king is calling uh, the, Jesus when he praises, praising the king of the universe. He has come. That's, I mean, we look at the world, we look at the, the kingdoms of the world, we, we, we look at, at, at you know, and, and sometimes we say, man, there's no hope in this world. There's, you know, we think, what's going to be the future? But we have a good news. Why? Because there's another kingdom, there's another nation, there's another king that has come, and we have to tell people, hey, there is, there is another. The good news is that there's a king here. He has come. Yes, and he has come, a kingdom from above, the kingdom of heaven, it's called also. He has come. And are you interested in this kingdom? Do you want to, well, I know you're sick and tired of the, 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 the world and you see all the wars and rumors of wars and you see all the hunger and you see all the death and you see all the, the sicknesses and you see all, 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 all this world. Are you sick? But has another kingdom. And I, I want to share this kingdom with you. 
right? And Jesus and, and, the, and the king has come and he says he died for our sins. And he was buried and he was, he was raised from the dead and God has certified that, he accepted that. And he made him the king of kings and lord of lords. That every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. This is the good news. Even without the cross, it's still good news because the king has come. The kingdom has come. It's not, I'm interested to be translated from, from this kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son Jesus. I'm interested. This, this, is, this is, John has started preaching the, king, uh, the gospel of the kingdom. And Jesus has preached that. Paul has preached that. This is the, we, it's so neglected. We, we just can't get to it to see that this is what it is the kingdom of God who will be preached to the ends of the, uh, the earth. So we need to learn and, and conform our message and learn from Jesus the evangelist, not from Ray Comfort and not from um, Billy Graham or not any of these men. Jesus has preached the kingdom of God and he said, <clears throat> just teaching in synagogues, proclaiming the kingdom and healing. You see, this, this goes in hand. When we start preaching the kingdom, the authority of the king. You know, I believe God wants us also to, to uh, as, as often as we can, to, to lay hands on people and, and pray for them that they might be healed. The, the, the gospel has power. And it's power not just for salvation, but also for healing. And praise God that God still does heal today. We have so many, so many uh, testimonies of that. But, and, and then I just want to continue because... Time goes fast. It says the first thing, and this is what we learn from Jesus. First he went and preached to the saved, to, to, to his people and to the sinners. He preached the kingdom of God. We need to preach the kingdom of God. But then, this is what I shared on, on, um, on Wednesday night. It says that seeing the people, seeing the people, um, he, uh, he, he, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like a sheep without a shepherd. The first thing that I probably want to, to see, it is Jesus seeing the people. Many times, many times, in many situations, we just don't see the people. You know, in, in John chapter 4, we see again Jesus exhorting his disciples. He says, lift up your eyes and see. Again, in that contest, Jesus was, you know, disciples had this, you know, they, they learned about the Samaritan woman. They saw, the, they saw the, all the Samaritans coming to, to see Jesus and, and uh, they, they couldn't see it. Jesus says, look at, look at the people. There's a harvest. There's, it is white. But they, they just could not see beyond the flesh, what the flesh could see. They just saw Samaritans. They just saw people. But Jesus saw more than that. He, Jesus saw opportunities. Jesus was so sinners who are, he says here, um, distressed and dispirited. He saw people in need. And, and uh, as I shared this on, um, on um, Wednesday night, Brother Hugo added that, um, that when he looked at people, he saw that distress and dispirited. He, he, he mentioned this, this uh, verse from, uh, from uh, the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Right? Blessed are. Do you see just your colleagues at work? Or at school, do you, do you just see fellow students? Or you see, like Jesus see, people who might need to hear the gospel? People who might need to 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 hear this message so they can be saved. Do you see that? I see. We we see when we are self-centered as it is. All we see is people, and we can go by and we we. Of course, in this we need to be led by the Spirit, not just led, empowered, and led by the Spirit. I, I said a story about Jim Newson. Um, I know this brother for a long time. Um, please go and watch his testimony. Um, I just shared briefly with you, he, he killed somebody, he was a murderer. 
before he was a Christian. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, he, somebody shared the gospel with him and he got saved. And he was powerfully saved. And the Holy Spirit led him to go immediately after he became a Christian and confess the murder to the police. So he went straight away, he paid the price, he wanted to repent, you know, that's what sometimes repentance means, putting things right. He went to the police and, and confessed his sin, that he was arrested, he was judged, and I think he was given something like 30 years, if I remember well, in jail. He went in jail and he started at the bottom and he was, uh, he was sharing Christ, with. he did everything his best, he was serving the Lord in jail, uh, you know, and then he advanced in the kitchen and in administration and he, he reached almost the top place like Joseph in, in jail. And they released him after 10 years because he was such, a, such an amazing uh, person. You know, Jesus, Jesus has done a great job on him. And now he's, uh, he's got this, this ministry, awesome ministry. I, I, but, uh, he, at one stage he said that I had this, such a burden to, to evangelize all the time, to share this, 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 this message that the that the Lord has committed to me, what is done for me, the, the power of the, you know, the gospel. And, and the Holy Spirit once told him, Jim, uh, you need to rest and you have to promise me that you will not share the gospel with anybody until you are led by the Spirit or prompted by the Spirit. And he promised. And he says, from that day, I was at rest. I was at rest. And the Holy Spirit started to lead him, to prompt him. He, the Holy Spirit was showing him, leading him. That's an amazing testimony. But this is, this is something that we need. We need to, to see people. Lift up your eyes and see, he says. Uh, the, see the harvest, not just see people. See opportunities where maybe the Holy Spirit can lead you to share Jesus with, with, with someone. Maybe one soul. One soul. And he said that he had compassion for them. He had compassion. Now, do, do I want to see this glory of Jesus? Do you want to see this Jesus or just one, one Jesus who is holy and pure? What about this Jesus who is a savior? What about this Jesus who, who is not self-centered but God-centered? He, he was doing his father's business here. The will of the father. Is this not his glory? What about this seeing, uh, you know, seeing the, the people and having compassion on them? Have we got compassion? Do, do, we, do we acknowledge that we are not like Jesus in many, many times? Do I want to be like Jesus? How do I become like Jesus? Just looking, like today, we look at Jesus, we behold the glory of God on the face of Christ, and we are being changed from, in, yeah, from glory to glory. We can be like him. This is the power of the gospel here. We can change. And this is what we're doing. This is, this is what we share this today, that we might see this, this image of God, this, this image of Jesus, and be changed and, and be transformed. Are you looking today? Are you looking at Jesus? Do you see his glory? A man who, a God who had compassion on them because he, he saw them that they, are, they were they are dispirited or distressed. Do you, do, do you have some dispirited or distressed people at work around you? Or you need to go to Africa to find them? No, we, we have them. Just we need to open our mouth. We need to know that God committed this message to us. It is will. Jesus came to save. Right? Um, <clears throat> then he said to his disciples, the, the, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. How true is that? After 2,000 years, after 2,000 years, Jesus noted that, that the harvest is, is plentiful. I don't say that. If the harvest was plentiful then, do you think the harvest is not plentiful now? No, Jesus looked at them and says, this is, harvest is, is plentiful, but the workers are few. This is the sad state, as I said at the beginning, that, that of the, the church where we're we only want some experts. You know, the, the Bible says the evangelists are not there to evangelize just themselves, but to train people, to train everybody in the church into the work of ministry 
And part of the work of this ministry is the Ministry of Reconciliation, right? So the workers are few. This is what Jesus says. This is, this is, um, <clears throat> this is true, even more true today. And therefore, it says, beseech the Lord of the harvest, harvest to send out workers into the harvest. And this is what I, I want us to pray. This is what I, I, we, 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 I want to pray and you want to pray because this is a, co a commandment from Jesus. It, it, just not, it just does not happen. You know, it, we need to pray to God. J Jesus says we need to pray that because the, the, the laborers are so few, the workers are so few, it says beseech. What did we say that beseech means uh, Wednesday? Oh, oh, sorry? Plead. In, might be in desperation, somebody said. Yeah. yeah. Cry aloud, beseech. Beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. Oh, brothers, this, is, this should be our prayer. Is that our prayer? Have, have we prayed this prayer lightly? I know we pray this uh, Wednesday, but we need to beseech the Lord of the harvest because God will have a people, God will have a testimony. If you look at, um, I think it's um, Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 14, in this last of the last days, you see that there is a remnant who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus and the faith of Jesus. That God will have a, a remnant. God will have a testimony in every time, every, you know, till the end. Will you be part of this remnant? Will you be part of the church who will not bow its knee to the image of the beast. You know, Brother Zach used to say that, that when God marks his people, he marks them on his forehead. Have you heard him? This? He marks them on his... Satan, he says, when, when the beast marks his people, he, he gives them a choice or on the head or on the hand. And he was saying, what's the difference here? Satan, one, uh, when he marks his people who are openly worshipping and following him, he gives them a choice, either to be public, uh, the head means visible to everybody, you know, to, to be worshippers of the beast or Satan, or a hidden worshipper, to get a mark on, on, on the hand. But God does not give the second option for the hand, just for the head and the forehead. It means you, if you are a worshipper of Jesus, you have to go public, you have to let everybody know. Doesn't make sense. I think you know something there. You know, we, need, we cannot be secret Christians. Even in the last days, we cannot hide, um, we, we cannot hide be, behind churchianity or deadly forms. We, we, we cannot hide behind this, this, this form of godliness without power. I'll pretend that we are Christians and just come to church. We need to be bold. Uh, we need to be his witnesses. Um, the workers are few. Will you be one of those workers? Will, 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 will you be? Will you? Do you see the glory of, of, of God on the face of Christ here? Do you see Him? Uh, the way He is, uh, the whole of Jesus as it is. And will you? Will you? Will I beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into His field, into His vineyard as it is, into His harvest? God, please send out. Workers, whom shall I send? Isaiah, is it 61? Yeah? No, Isaiah 6, is it? <laughs> I asked Brother, Brother Tyler on, uh, on Wednesday night, if we, when we pray, God, send out workers, or please send out workers into your harvest. He says, who will he send? He says, somebody else. <laughs> what did Isaiah say? Here I am, send me. Yeah, the moment we, 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 we see this, the moment we, we, we pray, the moment we, we see the, the heart of God, we cannot but say, here I am, send me, O oh Lord. Doesn't make sense. So I think we need to recover this. I think we need to recover many truths. Uh, yes, uh, I totally agree with what Sister Lenore and her message, and it's not just her message, it's also our message that we cannot go on uh, just because there's a lot of that happening out there. A lot of people just want to 
have a name for themselves. They just go there and you know, just try to preach, but they don't know the Lord. They, they're not worshipers. They, they don't spend time on the, at all at the feet of Jesus. They either learn something from the Bible and they just, just want to you know, go there and preach. And, and, and then they put videos on Facebook and they, they want a following and all that. I praise God for the testimonies. I'm not there to judge anybody. But make no mistake, going forth without going in will never do anything. We need first to go in and then go out. Doesn't make sense. If we go and spend time at the feet of Jesus and, and, and we worship in his presence and, 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 and as we heard this morning, you know, if we break the alabaster box, we, we surrender it all to him, we pour everything at his feet, you know, we go forth and we're going to have an aroma. And not just words. We need to have an aroma. And Paul says in, I think in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that, that this aroma for some are from life to death and from others life to life, life, to life and some from death. others to death. This aroma, this gospel will irk some people, will make them hate us and that's fine. Reject us, mock us. Spit at us. But hey, there's this one soul, maybe. There's this one soul who will be led to life. We, we cannot, we, we, we have to have our priorities. First you go in, and then you go out. And this is what we preach, and this is what we teach. But we want the whole of Jesus as it is. And some things we need to recover. And this is one of the things that if you feel that you... Um, not just feel, because we all feel things. And we, we don't want to base our Christian walk on just on feelings. We want to uh, base um, and rely on the Word of God and believe the Word of God, not our feelings. And this morning I want to tell you all that we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. All of us. All of us have a message. God has entrusted you at least one. Uh, uh, one talent and that talent is the, an ability to speak for the gospel all of us from the youngest to the oldest and it's not difficult sometime at work you can be a testimony but just at lunchtime taking the bible and reading the bible instead of gossiping and talking politics and everything else just take this bible and read and some people will note and they might come and ask you what are you reading and what are an opening that is. Or maybe you can just give a tract to somebody. It's not hard, is it? Just, just a tract. I know sometimes people can be angry. I, I, you know, I have people spitting in me just for that. But it's easy. Oh, I, don't, I know our flesh doesn't want to be mocked, but was Jesus mocked? Was he spat at? He was crucified. Yeah, it, but it's easy, just a track. There's some good news for you. Yeah, and then, who knows? We've heard many, many e extraordinary things. A, a seed was planted by a tract and it led to such great things. Many people, uh, that Indian sister that I've, uh, we shared on our WhatsApp group. What a wonderful testimony. It started with one tract, one tract by Jesus. When he was seeking so hard after God as a Hindu, um, a, g a girl stealing these holy Hindu books, you know, reading them. She was not allowed to it. But then she became sick. But she was so hungry for reality, for truth, that Jesus came and met her there. In, you know. But the whole, the whole thing she remembered about Jesus is about one tract and, and so on. And, and it led to so many great things. It's not easy. Well, it might be. What about, we did this a lot in, when we were young. Just come to church. Is it hard to invite somebody to church? Are you ashamed of that? You know, it's, it's not, oh man, it's all you, I can't be a, you start with the, the, these things. And God who is faithful will see that you're faithful in small things and what happened after that will entrust you to do greater things. Elijah, do you think you can do that? Damaris. Of course, it's not hard. It's not hard. 
uh, I just want to close uh, and we want to sing this song again and then we can pray. Amen. Well, let's stand.